All right, morning everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, welcome to the first uh, YouTube. Oh, I can hear myself. Well, this is my first YouTube live, so prepare for some major bugs and I've never done one of these before, so I know I'm gonna mess this up pretty bad. Anyways, today we're gonna be, I can hear a nickel. Hold on, uh, that's why. All right, so today I can still hear an echo. Sorry, guys, technical difficulties. Anyways, today we're going to be going over uh, some of the questions you guys asked on YouTube. I'm sorry, on Instagram. And then we're going to go over to the desktop and I'm going to go show you guys how we look for wholesale leads on Amazon. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Um, first off, we're gonna go over the questions from Instagram. Oh, get over here. Sorry, I'm real slow at this right now. Anyways, if you guys are in the chat, do me a favor and uh, type something in the chat box. Let me know uh, where you guys are from or maybe even what business model within Amazon that you guys are doing. In the meantime, I'm gonna start answering these questions on Instagram. All right, so first question comes from official lock, official lock, right? Which category to sell in are best for beginners since there's a lot of good ones, since a lot of good ones are gated? Um. <clears throat> We don't particularly look into like specific categories when we look for wholesale products on Amazon. Um, whatever category you're already ungated in, you should take a look at that. When you think of products on Amazon to look for to wholesale, think about products that you normally use on a regular basis, like replen replenishable products. So think, think of it that way. I'll get into more detail. Uh, about that in the in the live stream a little a little bit down in the live stream all right next question comes from anybody in here miami javier ramirez wholesale model thanks for uh, joining man appreciate it yeah if anybody else is in here just go ahead and ask your questions and i'll be sure to get to it and answer if i can but full disclosure i'm not i'm not a I'm not an Amazon expert. I mean, it's something that I do enjoy. If I if I can't help other people, I will. So that's the way I see it. And if you guys, yeah, if you guys want to ask questions, go ahead. All right, next question comes from OC Posh. Oh, it's not a question. She wants to learn more about wholesale. Well, I hope you're hope you're in here right now, OC Posh, because we're going over right now. Or you can watch the replay anyways. I'll I'll uh, repost it on the replay. All right, next question comes from Marcus Dwayne. How do you, how to know when, when it's safe to go deeper on a product? <clears throat> so after you find a wholesale lead, then you order, and if you're able to establish a wholesale account with the manufacturer or the brand owner, you, and if Jungle Scout says it sells 100 units, you buy like a test order of 20 units, right? You get it, you prep it, you send it into Amazon. It lists, then it sells in a week. So it's safe to say, well, 20 units sells in a week. So the next order you can do, depending on your tolerance level and your capital, you can order 40 or you can order 80, right? Or you can order a whole month's worth of inventory because you already have that initial uh, data. So the longer you sell uh, that wholesale product, the more data you get and the more the more confident you can get when you do start purchasing more, right? All right, going back. More questions. All right. Next question comes from Sarau Spencer. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to say your guys' names, right? What wholesalers are good to order from in order to help in the ungating process? 
um i remember there used to be um like for groceries for instance there used to be a uh, a company where we could order from that's how we got engaged we ordered it and showed the invoice um <clears throat> to amazon and they accepted it then they ungated us in in groceries i'm not sure who you can use now but when i do i'll post it on the uh on the chat and it's sorry i'm gonna be stopping here every once in a while i can hear myself i can hear the echo going on what is this no it's not that Okay, anyways, moving on, moving on. Moving on. Like I said, I'm going to be messing up pretty bad. But this is the first one. And I'm planning on doing this uh, fairly regularly. Okay, so next question comes from... Let Dalne. Sorry. I know we chat every once in a while, but I can't say her name. <laughs> Wholesale. I really need to do it more my goal for next year definitely you, you want to get into well i don't think you should jump into it from the very start you should practice using um like a non-scalable business model like um like private label no not private label i'm sorry like retail arbitrage for instance that way if you do make mistakes it's just uh, mistakes on one product but once you start getting into a scalable business model like private label or wholesale um the errors that you you make like just multiply right if that makes sense okay next question we're moving up since covid is is around and one-on-one -on -one meetups is not ideal will you do a skype call or one-on-one -on -one instead uh, unfortunately i don't do uh private meetups or Skype calls. Um, I have a full-time job and I just don't have the time. I, I barely have enough time to um, create, you know, IG or, or YouTube content or let alone do my full-time job and Amazon wholesale. So it's pretty tough. I mean, I do have a wholesale course, but I'm not going to really plug that in here if you're interested. Do you find suppliers in Hawaii or in the mainland? I have suppliers in both Hawaii and mainland. Um, yeah, but if for for the mainland, our mainland accounts, we do have um, prep centers out there that we send it to. They're actually family members, so I can't I can't really uh, recommend them. <laughs> what difficulties do you face wholesaling in Hawaii? How do you say this name? Unfazed unfazed useful all right difficulties wholesaling in hawaii definitely shipping uh, a lot of products we can't compete because of multiple shipping uh, because we're in hawaii so that's one of the biggest hurdles but if you can figure it out it's still fairly profitable i would say you know i accidentally closed the chat hold on i need to open this back up stand by Watching, watching the stream. <laughs> oh well. So that's on mute. I can still hear the echo. Oh, I'm sorry, Javier. You did ask a question. Let me go back. All right. What credit cards would you recommend when starting? 800 plus credit score, by the way. Awesome, man. 800 plus. Like I'm right around the corner from there, so uh, credit cards to get started. If you're below 524, um, if you guys aren't familiar with 524, that that means if you've applied for five less than five, if you're over, well, if you got approved for five credit cards within a 24 month period, then Chase is automatically going to see that. 
and they're not going to approve you for any new cards. But I do recommend, if you're below 524, like 424 and below, then I do recommend Chase cards. Anything outside of that, I'm really not familiar with. Um, <clears throat> but for Chase, first card I would recommend, well, it all depends on on what your what your goals are, right? Uh, if you want to travel more, if you want to get cash back. Um, in our case, in mine and Andy's case, <clears throat> we want to do more traveling so all our business expense will well not all so depending on what cards you get from chase sorry i'm kind of rambling on um we'll start off if it's shipping if your biggest expense is shipping for instance then you want to get the chase ink preferred card because you get 3x back per dollar spent if you do a lot of advertising if you do office supplies type stuff actually not it doesn't cover advertising so office supplies that's the main thing office supplies you can use the chase in cash and if anything else like for inventory for manufacturers or or distributors that do accept credit cards you can use the chase Inc. unlimited long story short chase go chase all the way that's what i recommend All right, going back into the questions. What difficulties? Okay, I'm a beginner wholesaler and jobless. Should I stick with a debit card before a credit card? If you're just starting, definitely stick with a debit card. I mean, well, what's the point in leveraging if you don't have your base down, right? You're just going to leverage losses if you don't have it down yet. So use your own money, put your own, put a little skin in the game and and learn from experience and when you're ready and you have a scalable model then you can start leveraging credit cards to uh, purchase more inventory if need be will your youtube be live today or someday soon it's live right now pros and cons of wholesaling in hawaii uh shipping definitely premier auto detailing is asking more about wholesaling so we're going to go over that today hope you guys are in here uh, so did FBA.ca wants to learn more about wholesale. Yep, you're welcome, uh, Javier. Thanks for watching, by the way. <laughs> There'll be more of these. I know um, I was expecting not many people to be in here right now, but eventually I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing these more often and sort of provide more value. And hopefully there'll be more uh, viewers in the future. But I'm prepared for that, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Credit cards and leveraging them with your cash flow. Okay, so credit cards. In a nutshell, chase first if you can qualify for it. Um, I've heard that the Amex Blue, something like that. I don't have it, but I heard the Amex Blue gets you like two times back per dollar spent. If you're in, oh, again, it depends. What your goal is, travel or cash back. So that's the first thing you should ask for. Ask yourself, but definitely chase. Cash flow. Yeah, you need a software that keeps track of keeps track of accounting. So what we use, we use inventory labs. And I make sure I put down exactly what my expenses are, cost of goods with the shipping, right? And then it breaks down all your Amazon fees. So if you have a software like that and it keeps track of what's in your inventory in real time so you don't have to go back into your Amazon um, seller seller central and, and, and count all the inventories but but mm, it is sort of delayed but if you use it more uh, you'll get more familiarized with it and you'll know the limitations but inventory lab definitely it it does help because if you do hire a CPA or if you do your own taxes at the end of the year amazon just sends you a 1099k and it just shows the total the total amount total payout that they give you they don't really show they don't show what the fees are so you're gonna have a cpa asking hey from your total gross i mean you just got paid this much where's the rest of it so that's where inventory labs comes in so inventory labs for cash flow and uh, quickbooks definitely 
oh and definitely have a separate business checking account so you separate all your um all your expenses right from personal to business It's the Amex Blue. Okay, thank you. Amex Blue Business Plus. Thank you for for that, Jay. How have sales been in the last weeks? I know she have an upload. <laughs> Good question. Actually, my kids came down from Vegas to visit us um, in June. So we stopped. We stopped um, sending inventory out to, uh, to Amazon. And after a week, no, after a month, then we ran out of inventory. Um, they came over to visit us during the uh, the summer vacation, and then we haven't gone back ever since. But I'm not worried. I mean, during COVID, uh, one of the months. I mean, we had our <laughs> we had our best quarter ever. I'm, I'm sure you guys seen the post. One of our posts we did 240,000 in sales in 30 days. So, I mean, I'm not saying that's why we stop. I'm just saying we're not too worried about it. But we do have about $25,000 worth of inventory sitting in the garage that needs to get processed. So that's the other thing I'm kind of fighting with right now. It's getting back into Amazon and getting a routine, especially, sorry, I'm rambling again, but I kind of got into this whole live streaming thing, right? So I bought all the equipment, learned all the tricks and the trades and the tools that I need but now I, I think I got it pretty down pretty much down and um, I want to focus more on YouTube and creating content and getting more comfortable with being in front of the camera and you can tell I'm I'm terrible at this but whatever I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore okay let's how has sales been in the last weeks okay that's what I was answering so yeah non-existent because we haven't been sending anything in to Amazon. Okay, next question. Oh. Oh, we got eight people in here. Do me a favor, guys. If you just came in, uh, leave a message and let me know where you guys are from. Also, what business model you guys are doing. And if you have any questions, just type them in. By the way, how's the audio? Because in my headset, it's pretty laggy. I can hear myself echoing, but it's not too bad. What about for you guys? Okay, in the meantime, we're going to move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next question comes from... Payoraskan, Payoraskan, how to calculate correctly the profit. Uh, I highly recommend um, an accounting software like Inventory Labs. That's what we use. But if you're just starting off, yeah, you can use like an Excel spreadsheet. But after a while, yeah, it's gonna. It just takes way too much time, and doing things manually is is really time consuming, especially when you're trying to scale a business, you want to invest more in tools that allow you to be more scalable, right? Sorry, I'm flipping around here. Javier, uh, have you worked with other sellers on the listing regarding PPC? Audio is good. Thank you. Have you worked with other sellers on the listing regarding PPC? Other sellers? No, I've never worked with other sellers on listings. I'm not I'm not sure what that even means. Um usually Yeah, usually I don't talk to other sellers. <laughs> In fact, isn't that against Amazon TOS? Well, I guess if you're talking to other sellers and you're and prices are being affected, but no, not about PPC. I've been talking to like my mentors about what what their thoughts are on PPC, but but mainly you should be able to get away with just automatic auto. Um, what's that feature? See, it's been a while. Auto auto campaigns is good enough. Yeah, I don't want to get 
I don't want to say too much because it's been a while since I've I, I, I kind of set it up and then I forget it. So I'm going to have to go into my Seller Centro and, and, and dig into it a little bit on the on the settings that I use. All right, most much help with that question. Okay, next question. Best virtual debit card for international sellers. Farhad Shahonli. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I, I'm not familiar with virtual credit cards. I won't be able to help you there. All right. Um, consummate. Be in consummate. Your research method. There are so many others out there. Jungle Scout manual. Um, we do everything manually. And yeah, if you're in here right now, I'll show you guys basically in a nutshell how we find wholesale leads. If that's something you guys are interested in. Uh, one more question. Jay from CO. Trying to start wholesale, but it's hard to find suppliers. Not even sure if I should even start right now since I probably already missed out on the fourth quarter. Uh, missed out on fourth quarter. What do you mean by missed out on the fourth quarter? Um, is Amazon not accepting new shipments if um, if you don't qualify? Is that is that the case? I'm not I'm not quite sure. What process do you use? find good prep centers do you contact them before ordering like I said I my prep center is actually family members on the mainland and I can't really recommend them sorry trying to start wholesale but it's hard I'm not sure fourth quarter sales you shouldn't let fourth quarter sales missing out on fourth quarter sales stop you um i mean it's not like you're jumping in and, and ordering like a whole month month and a half worth of inventory right so you're still getting a feel about like sales velocities and getting more familiarized with the tools of the trade right so you should just do it get into it and do it anyways don't let that don't let that stop you that's all i can say all right, uh, give me a little bit, guys. I'm going to hook up my desktop so you guys can see how we look for wholesale leads. All right, stand by. set up here and take a little sip of coffee it's about what was it seven o'clock here in the morning in Hawaii all right computer screen oh yeah so I wrote a couple of notes here so some of the tools you're gonna need when researching um, and when we do research, you know, I'm going to blow this up for you guys. When we do research, we use, it's usually manual. I don't use like a search feature, like a filtering tool in, in Jungle Scout. I like to do things manually. Um, it may be better, it may not. I, I figured if everybody uses the same tools, everybody gets the same results. That's kind of how I think about it. So I like to do things manually. Okay, going back into Amazon. So usually I like to start off by just typing in bestseller ranks. Bestseller rank Amazon. Again, I apologize if I botch this because it's been a long time. not a long time but uh, you, you kind of get to a point we, we, we got into a point where um, we have 
a pretty healthy list of wholesalers and, and distributors that we can choose from and each of them have like hundreds of products to choose from so even keeping track of all that stuff and updating even when i'm updating like price lists my wholesale lists that that's all manual so even if i did find more manufacturers i'm not i mean i'm not justifying why i'm not researching anymore i'm just saying that we have a healthy amount of leads that we can already use so who knows maybe if i hired like virtual assistants they could probably help me out with stuff like that javier what scanning software do you use price sheet catalogs oh, i was going to show you um so like i said i do things all manually oops i do things all manually um and i use this spreadsheet I'll show you guys how to use this. It's just keeping track of leads and then contacting them afterwards. But I have, I do have a separate sheet for my existing um, wholesale products. And that's where I actually have formulas in there that calculate, um, that do all the calculation that tells me how many units I should be ordering um, and the price list and all that stuff. Okay, so what category? I, I personally, personally like to go into uh, beauty and health, beauty and personal care. And then from here, sorry, I'm gonna be all over the place. So again, these are the tools you're gonna need. Jungle Scout Pro. Uh, the reason for Jungle Scout Pro is just to speed up the process when trying to see a sales velocity for a product. Um, but if you don't have that, you can always do it manually using Jungle Scout Estimator. Are you guys familiar with those softwares? Uh, TWF Buy Scope, Buy Box Scope. Buy Box Scope shows you. So if you go into a, uh, a product, for instance, It pulls up the data here on the first page, yeah. Well, it's supposed to anyways. No, oh, maybe not. Oh, there it is. Buy box. So it shows you the buy box price. It shows you how many competitive sellers there are. And I'll show you in a little bit why that's important. DS Amazon Quick View. Amazon Quick View. Oh, Amazon Quick View is when you're in this main screen, then I believe it shows up here how many uh, competitive sellers and whether a product is sold by Amazon or not. I guess that's the other thing I should cover. Um, rule of thumbs: we when we're source when we're looking for products for leads, we normally don't want to compete with Amazon. So as soon as I see this sold by Amazon here, I'm not even moving forward with that anymore. Uh, if I see just one seller, that usually means it's a private label product. So I'm looking for multiple sellers, but not sold by Amazon. And usually you can't really find good leads here on Amazon bestsellers because, I mean, these are fast moving products and everybody's looking at these, right? So it's, if there are multiple sellers and people know about it, it's highly competitive. You'd have to order a lot just to be competitive, right? But I'm kind of just using this as a segue. Let's see, what is this? Tink Tinkle Bell? Jeez, what is this? Eyebrow Razor. So from here, so I'm just looking for keywords now. So eyebrow. Oh, okay. So normally, things like these this is like 450 I don't like to purchase inventory that's that I can't sell for more than $20 especially for a seller here in Hawaii so I'm looking for FBA prices that are above 15 around $20 at least so this might not be a good a good a good keyword to use 
unless you bundle them up, right? And then, then you can sell it for 20 bucks. What is this? Rechargeable eyebrow hair remover. It's probably a private label product. There's two FBA sellers. Yeah, let me know if I'm moving too fast. So two separate sellers. And this thing sells. Let's go back. I mean, it's a possibility. This sells how many units? See, I've been getting this this issue. Average sales rank, no data, 1254. So I've been having some issues with my Jungle Scout. Uh, Chrome extension. It says no sales rank, but if you come down here, it shows the sales rank. It's one thousand five hundred thirty-four. Now this is a good time to show you guys um, manually how we look for um, how we calculate estimated sales rank. So you go into Jungle Scout uh, dot com forward slash estimator. How long have you been streaming? I don't want to make this too long. Thirty-six minutes. Man, I'm so lost right now. All right, bestseller rank. This was already copied it already, so I'm gonna type it in here. Choose a marketplace, United States, and whatever category it's in. This is in the beauty and personal care. Oh, let me go back. You guys see that? Beauty and personal care here. Let's type this here. Calculate sales. 6,330. Okay, so this is probably a uh, potential Brazil Brazil store okay so let's say we found a potential wholesaler or a potential brand owner to a uh, contact so now you want to I put everything in here so company name total sales per month oh that's not right 6330 Oh, let's go back to the ASIN. ASIN is. Oh. Stop jumping around. Okay. Company name is. Brazil Store. Brazil. Brazil. FBA price is $21.96. Number of competitive sellers. It's just one. Why is it just one? We saw two, right? Unless they're... Okay, so competitive sellers... I forgot to mention this. A competitive seller is... Um, FBA sellers that are within 2% of this buy box price. So if it's... If another seller is more than 2% outside of this buy box price, 2196 then they're not considered a uh, competitive seller. It's important to know because... If you're a competitive seller, then you get to rotate in this buy box, right? Let's look at the price of this other um, FBA seller. You see that off? $22.98. Well, I guess it's far enough. I don't know. I can't calculate it right now. But he's not being considered for the buy box. Okay, let's go back here. Competitive sellers. So you, there's already one seller. So that'll including you that'll make it two right so this spreadsheet calculates um depending on the total sales per month and how many competitive sellers assuming you can order from the manufacturer you can order 3165 units in a month if that makes sense i think there's a question in chat real quick hold on What scanning software? Okay, what percentage of brands versus distributor wholesales do you carry in your inventory? I like to work 
more with uh, brand owners. But I do actually. OK, so I, I prefer to work. I'm just like anything else. You should try to get as close to the source as possible. So the source would be the brand owner, right? Um, if you can't do that in your initial um, your initial reach out, whatever you call it, you can work with the distributor. I've done this before. That's why I've worked with a distributor. Then as my sales grew, I ordered more and more, but I kept bugging the, uh, the brand owner because they don't deal with a small, well, they could have considered me a small seller. And then when I showed them that, Hey, I've been ordering, you know, 10, 20,000 per order every month from a distributor. And then they said, Hey, okay, um, we'll let you open up an account then. So I've, I've done those before, but yeah, your goal should be open it as close to the source as possible. But if it's still profitable working with the distributor, I mean, why not? And when I say profitable, it could be anywhere from like 30%, but I'm still okay with 15% if I can, if I can move, um, so much inventory, right? Would you say beauty and personal care is one of the best kind to start with? Yeah, definitely. Beauty and personal care, uh, groceries, just think replenishables. Yeah. Stuff that you use that run out that you have to reorder, not just one time, one time use. Okay. Going back into this. So right now we have our first lead, right? Potential lead contact info, date, contact, contact method. Uh, those I, I tend to fill out a little later. So I'll put all my leads first. And what I used to do, I used to do like a hundred of these per month and contact a hundred manufacturers and then get most of them won't even respond. Like 10 of them would probably respond. And, um, so yeah, 80%, no, 90, 90% would just not respond. 10% would respond, but, uh, five of them would say no. Then five might, or about three would, would approve you. Sorry. I'm kind of rambling on. So about three would approve you. And once you start going through their wholesale list, cause once you open an account with them, you have to. Um, ask for their wholesale list and then from there you can find out what their wholesale price is then you can compare that number with what the fba prices are on amazon right and if it's most times it's not even going to be profitable most times but you will find like a needle in a haystack as long as you keep looking i think i had to do i had to contact on average 100 manufacturers per week i could have done more but it's just that i, I work full time and I was sort of dedicating uh, about four hours, four hours a night back in the day. But yeah, as long as you stay consistent and you make those, you make those contacts, um, you'll you'll have a Rolodex with um, a bunch of different manufacturers and, and distributors that you can work with. I'm rambling, sorry. Are your distributor brands located in Hawaii? I feel like it'd be super expensive if a brand had to ship Hawaii and then you have to ship to Amazon. Yeah, for my Hawaii accounts, definitely they're they're in Hawaii, but for my um, mainland accounts, uh, they're on the mainland. And like I said, I I do have a prep center that I use. They're not really a prep center, just family members that I send inventory to. Then they do what I ask them to, and then they ship it to a Amazon warehouse. All right, where are we at? So that's our first, that was our first lead. So another way, oh, you know what? It's shipped and sold by Amazon. Is this what we were looking at? No, this is Revlon. We weren't looking at this. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Burt's Bees. Sometimes when I see multiple sellers, 
um, I'll still I'll click anyways even though if it's sold by Amazon so this is another method that you can use to find wholesale leads so I'm not concerned about this brand well you know what let's look at the brand let's just type it in Burt's Bees So it's all looks like it's all sold by Amazon. Okay, that doesn't matter. So what does matter is I'll go into this the list of sellers here. So this is another way you can find wholesale inventory. You go by a seller. You can actually look at a seller's um, storefront and find out the different brands that they carry okay, in this case he's got Burt's Bees so I'll just open Oops. I think I clicked on the same link uh, there's Pantene yeah another rule of thumb if you've heard of it before the brand name I, I stay away from it heard of singer before Pete coffee see now you face oh, you know we have enough examples okay so let's go down we're looking for listings that have multiple sellers but not so by Amazon right one FBA seller okay so this one doesn't have anything Search and dry. See, Amazon sells this. So we can search by manufacturer. See if they have any products that aren't also by Amazon, right? This is 850, that's too low for me. Kind of low sales velocity too. 255,000. So by Amazon, here's one, $14, 1480, uh, still worth looking into, right? So this, this one has five sellers. Yeah, I would say this is a possibility. The 1480. So I have this, uh, another Chrome extension that I use. It's called the uh, AMZ calculator. This way you don't have to go all the way into your seller central and type in all the numbers to figure out if you're profitable or not. You can just do it from this Chrome extension. Uh, product cost. See, we're just guessing at this point. Uh, let's say it's, I don't know, $4. Shipping costs for you guys on the mainland, I don't know, 10 cents per unit. Go down. We're selling this for $14.80. Profit per unit is $5.84. So let's say, see, even at $5, let's just say. Well, you, maybe you might not be able to get for five dollars. Let's say seven. For seven dollars. Okay, ten cents shipping. After all the fees, you can make two dollars eighty-four. Your net margin is about twenty percent. Twenty percent, and depending on the sales velocity for one of these. So velocity two sixty per month. So two sixty per month. Oops. Later. 260 per month times uh, what's the profit? 284. So that's about $738 in profit, right? Wait, is that right? Profit net margin. Okay, your return on investment is 40%. So you make so you can invest 2692 and make $738 in profit. 2692. All right, 27. Oh, that doesn't even add up, does it? Estimated monthly, oh, it's the estimated monthly profit. Okay, you see what I'm saying though. Sorry, I'm not good at that, that type of math. Let me see if there's any questions. 
Okay, no questions. Going back into it. Okay, so this is definitely a uh, potential potential brand that we can contact. So we'll add it to the list. Oh, oh did I just overwrite that? Okay, what is this? Company name. Certain dry store. FBA price. 1480 total estimated sales. What was it? 260? 260. 260. How many competitive sellers? We have five plus you, that's six. So you can order 43 units in a month when you share between six multiple um, sellers, right? Oh, this is another uh, Chrome extension that I use. I use a uh, Keepa, but it's not free anymore. It's actually a paid Chrome extension. Sometimes when I have to second guess myself and I need more concrete data whenever making um, a decision, I'll look at the uh, Keepa chart and make sure it is selling, right? Every time it goes down, every time the rank goes down, then that means it will sell. So in a week's time, it, it does move pretty frequent. I need a break. I haven't talked this much. Uh, how long have we been streaming? I don't know. Let me know, guys. Is this useful? Um, you want to see more of this? Let me know in the uh, the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break a little bit and kind of talk to you guys. Who's in here? Five people watching right now. Yeah. Type. If there's five people, do me a favor. Type where you're from. Whatever. Type what model wholesale model not wholesale what fba model you do or type your ig screen name then i'll then maybe i'll recognize you <laughs> i'll drink my coffee in the meantime oh man it's tough navigating through all these buttons and trying to keep a stream going and Try not to mess up, but I give up already. I'll get better as I go. Hopefully I'm not botching this too much. Thanks, Jay. Super useful from Colorado. What is the highest rank you would sell? I mean, actually I've sold a rank number one during COVID. So highest rank because the, it was so high in oh it was the number one selling product it was so high in demand that it was so high in demand that even the sellers couldn't keep up with the demand but i was able to purchase a couple thousand worth of a couple thousand units and be able to send those in when others couldn't and that's kind of how we were able to do our sales during uh during covid time so yeah as long as you can, as long as the demand's there and and it's profitable and fast moving, I mean, we've done rank number one before. Oh, I need more coffee. You guys have your coffee? What time is it there? 7.30 here. I've been up since 4. I'm pouring coffee. It's not what you think. Fifty K. What is the highest rank you would sell? No, yeah, that that's what I mean. I've I've sold the number one product, the number one ranking product in its category. I mean even less than one thousand, right? So number one, literally number one. Oh, 1.35 p.m. Miami. Oh, man. What time is it? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. Yeah, you guys enjoying your uh, long weekend? Do you guys work full-time jobs? Dude, I work full-time job, and I am exhausted. I needed this. I need this three-day uh, Labor Day weekend. I just couldn't wait for it. Been so stressed at work. 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but um, I'm considered an essential worker, whatever that means. I work at a hospital, and oh man, it's been it's been bad. It's been so busy. Yeah, that, that's the other reason why I can't come home and work on my Amazon business as much as I'd like to. It's just I'm I'm just so stressed and so exhausted when I get home from work. Why haven't I gone full time? I could actually. It's just that during COVID, COVID's the exception. Um, if it wasn't for COVID, shoot, my job is so easy. I get paid over six figures, and it, it's non stressful. I was able to get to this point doing wholesale with a full time job. Plus, the other reason, too, back in the day was I didn't have enough capital. So even if I did quit my job, I wouldn't have enough capital to <clears throat> to invest to make it even worth it. Right. But now I guess now I do have enough capital where I could make as much or not, if not more. Definitely more, actually, than my full time job. So, yeah, I do want to I'm kind of struggling with it. The other reason, too, is um, we're currently renting our property here in, in Hawaii. I sold my rental property in Las Vegas, but I still haven't bought a property here in Hawaii because everything's all overpriced. Uh, so we're waiting on that. And with COVID and with um, the forbearance um, expiring, right? And people losing their jobs and, and, and Hawaii with their tourism industry. And like we're, we're in another lock, lockdown right now. So nobody's going to work. If you're non-essential, you're you're home and you're yeah, you, you've got your unemployment and federal funding and all that stuff, but still it's tough. Like people are gonna miss payments, they're gonna default on their properties. So either they're either there's gonna be more houses out there. But Hawaii's different. I mean there there's always people buying, especially from, from Asia and stuff. Long story short, I'm hoping the market goes down before I purchase a property now. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Full-time job also. I uh, actually work at an Amazon fulfillment center. Oh, cool. Dude, for a while there. I mean, it, I'm sure it is the case now because fulfillment centers have been testing positive for uh, COVID cases, right? I'm sure you guys changed your whole procedure and yeah. Yeah, it must be tough, dude. I know at the hospital I work at, it's it's, it, it's really tough. What sucks is I can't name any companies, but the company I work for, they don't. They don't they like to say certain procedures, but they don't enforce them because there's no way to enforce it. So we're kind of oh, never mind. I'm not even going to get to it. Consider also consider essential. I'm looking into getting into real estate here in Colorado. Oh, awesome! Yeah, what I have this one customer because I used to be a, a service guy, I'd go to different properties at the convention center in Hawaii. Um, there's a facilities, a chief, chief facilities engineer out there that I was talking to, and he was telling me that yeah, he's got rental properties in Colorado. I'm like, oh, cool. I want to get into that. How many houses do you have? And he said he had over a hundred properties in Colorado. And he's just been buying properties before marijuana was legal, and now they're all booming, man. I don't, I don't even know why he still works. How's experience? How's the experience of being an out of the mainland seller been for you? I have plans on moving out of USA, but still running the Amazon business. You, it's a challenge, that's for sure. Like, especially with shipping, right? Um, but I think it doesn't matter who you are or where you're at. I think everybody has their advantages, right? So it's up to you to be able to figure out what those advantages are and capitalize on it. That's how, that's how I see it. I think there's opportunities out there. You just have to be creative when you when you do look for them and find them. 
Okay, you know what? I think I'm done, dude. I've been streaming for an hour. I've never done one of these before. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I'm planning on doing more of these. Maybe even uh, different, not just wholesaling stuff. I'm thinking about possibly playing cash flow with cash flow live uh, with other resellers out there. So that's one thing I wanted to do. I'm letting you guys know right now. If you guys want to get into cash flow, the Robert Kiyosaki um, board game. There's a, you go to this website, he's got a cash flow on there. I'm thinking of doing that with resellers, if that's something you guys are interested in. I think you can only have four players at a time, so that would be pretty fun. Um, I'm thinking of probably going on show and, and talking to other sellers and them recommending other channels that I can kind of subscribe to. But I found out if, if you stream and then you look at YouTube content, they're going to flag you. I know they're going to flag you if you watch like Disney channels and stuff. I, I was watching Disney channels with my, my daughter on the stream and, and it shut me down. So since then, I haven't streamed anything from, from YouTube. Javier, let's do it. I'm in. Okay, cool, dude. Yeah, message me on instagram and then when i do go when i have a schedule for cash flow we'll, we'll play and uh, i'm sure i can get more people to play with this and then we'll stream it if you're okay with that so yeah like probably rating recommendations for youtube channels recommendations for ig uh maybe even some gaming i don't know if you guys are in well it doesn't matter Honestly, I just want to do it. I just want to test out the capability of, of my streaming setup. So I'll probably play some retro gaming at one time and you guys can ask questions and I'll answer them as we go. No Insta, but I got you on Facebook. Okay, cool. Did you take any courses? Larry's course? Yes, I took Larry's course. Um, I recommend it. It's good. But before Larry's course, I did purchase um, the wholesale formula. And yeah, I recommend that too. And I know Amazon Lit, um, they came up with the course um, a few months ago. I'm not sure exactly when, but I didn't purchase that yet. Maybe when I start getting back into wholesaling and, and, and researching. And But yeah, I did have a sit down with Eric when my wife and I went to uh, New York. And this guy is super knowledgeable. So I'm sure if... If those guys came up with a course, I mean, yeah. And you don't know anything about wholesaling. Even if he did know about wholesaling, he told me stuff about PPC that that I never knew. And it definitely, definitely helped me during um, during peak seasons. As long as it isn't any of those huge channels, you're good to do it. Okay, that's good to know. What's your name? My name? Oh, my name is Jason. Nice to meet you guys. All right, guys. So, yeah, hopefully this is the first of many. And I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thanks for hanging out. Hope I answer all your questions. And I'll see you guys in the next stream.